All right, guys, I'm excited about this one. We have traveled north to AMI Attachments. We're going to do a full factory tour, check out some of their premium products, and see what this place is all about. Steve. Mike. First off, thanks for having us. Good so to have we should you. introduce you first. You are the founder and CEO of a AMI Attachments. You have yes. built uh, quite the little quite the little empire here. It is, Thank it you. is very impressive. First impressions are very good. Thank you. So just give us a little bit of uh, history, the dream, the vision. Like this, this company has come a long ways in a short period of time. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's good to have you, Mike. Um, thank. Just honored to to have you visit oh, us we're here. We're excited to yeah. be here. <laughs> yeah. We've. Um, I started this company back in uh, 2001, and um, when I uh, first started, my background is ag, and we, we started with some ag, ag tools uh, when I first started, and had some friends in the heavy construction industry. That industry has always uh, intrigued me, and I, I when I started uh, building attachments for for uh, the heavy construction industry, I, I first off built some attachments for friends of mine right kind of worked with we, we, we've uh, all kind of started there you gotta yeah, start yeah. somewhere right? yeah that's right yeah, yeah. the yeah. friends end up being the guinea pigs <laughs> so uh so yeah so that we've evolved from a company of, of five to over 150 now and and it's been uh it's been a lot of fun a lot of challenges um but i would say what part of our a big part of our success has been um our team our we're uh what sets us apart are innovation and um, and, and quality. That's our, those are our two main. Yeah, that's the and, that's and the two things. Support, really, two yeah. things that have always the what little bit I've worked with you guys the last couple of years is you are always pushing the envelope, whether it's the grafter claw or even the tilt buckets and the and the uh, axial tilt thing. I'm probably going to name it wrong, but there's a lot of different things you're pushing the envelope on. Yeah. And <laughs> you don't have to look far at this stuff to see that it is the top of the line premium attachments and products for sure. So yeah, really, that that's really our focus is is taking uh, even even uh, simple as a bucket. You know, we're, we're you know a bucket's not just a bucket. We we right. really look at the. The uh, the materials used, the shape, the um, the <laughs> weight. two things and, and, yeah. are way more crucial yeah. than a lot of people a lot of people realize. Shape and materials. It's it's crazy yeah. how important those little details will set one bucket yeah. apart from the other. So, well, we're excited to be here. You're gonna let us pull back the curtain a little bit, take a look inside. We're gonna go check it out and see what this place is all about. Fantastic. All right, thank you, there sir. You thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Good morning. I hear you are a designated factory tour guide. Oh man. Let's get ready. Now, no pressure, but this is the difference maker between a good factory tour and not a good factory tour. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a good one. It comes down to the it's tour good. guide. Yeah, you're the right. The pressure is on. You're right. All right. It's going to be good. I Let's promise. see. Well, they'll be the judge of that. <laughs> That's out of our control, Jeff. <laughs> okay. I'll right. do my best. All right. And then they can be the judge. Let's, uh, let's see this place. All right. Let's go. So what we're going to do, give you a little highlight, is uh, we're just in the front lobby. We're going to do a quick tour through the engineering area. Uh, and then that'll lead us into the facilities. And we'll start at raw materials and work our way through all the way through the production uh, process down to assembly where the attachments ship out on a truck. Awesome. Well, let's go. Let's go. All right. So with AMI attachments, uh, engineering is a big focus. And it's because there's so many nuances with lugging and connecting to all the different types of makes and models of machines, uh, as well as just simply innovation in general. And so there's Which, always... That's kind of what you guys are known for a little bit, is the innovation and pushing the limits. For sure. Um, even at, at Con Expo this year, there was only one product that was the same product from 2020. Everything else in our booth was brand new um, to the market. So. Innovation is very, very important. So this is where that happens. This is, this is the brain trust right here. And so this is a, a team of designers and engineers. I'm sure if I got notepads, I can give them some pointers. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have listened to your feedback. We have taken it and we've, we've accepted the good stuff and, and we filed the So the you filed 95% of my feedback. In, in the circular <laughs> filing cabinet? Yeah, the one that it. has the plastic liner in it over there? <laughs> <That one. laughs> no, in all seriousness, this is absolutely key 
to what's going on now and what's going on in the future. Exactly. And so uh, Dwight's the leader of, of this department and we have team leads on both excavator and wheel loaders uh, and they're working on different attachments all the time as well as uh, thumbs. Thumbs are very design heavy uh, because you really have to get those specs right for the machine right. and the tip radius. And, and application. Yes. Everybody thinks a thumb's a thumb, but there's a lot of different applications that require different styles and types of thumbs. For sure. So. so once design is done and it's approved, ready to go, then it hits the production floor. And everything here is automated, so it's all CNC. The production files uh, get sent to all the different machines in the floor. Um, and we start with raw materials and we go to CNC, laser cut, and then into either robotic welding or manual. So let's go check that out. Let's do it. We'll find out uh, uh, where it all starts. Okay. So we are at the entrance of the plant and we're gonna head right back to raw materials where there's plates of steel and we'll go over uh, what kinds of steels that we use. And the whole thing is that we need good materials to make good products. And that's where it starts. So glass is on and we'll head to the back. We're officially where the magic happens. So we're indoors here, and this is where all the raw materials are stored. Most of these sheets, you can see that we've got uh, Hardox and Strengths Performance Steel. Those are the two steels that we use for almost all our products here at AMI Attachments. The whole point is that you can only make a good product when it's made of good materials. So there's no hiding it. If there was no paint on your bucket, this is the steel that you would see your attachment being made out of. This brown colored material, you can see there, it's upside down, but it says Hardox 500 Tough. Yeah, there you go. Hardox is a, is a wear plate that has properties uh, like no other steel. And so this allows AMI to make products that have high, high wear uh, properties to it with a thinner gauge of steel. So thickness does not always equal longevity anymore. When you have something made out of Hardox 500 Tough or Hardox 450, you're getting a strong bucket that wears slowly, but doesn't have all that extra weight of what you would have in like a, an AR400 or even a Hardox 400 steel. Uh, these vastly outperform without that added weight. So the first thing I think of whenever I think of harder is I think of brittle. But it's, so it's important to also use this metal in the right places on the bucket, correct? That's right. So if you look at an AMI bucket, there's two steels used. Anything where there's contact with the surface, where is a wear point, that is hardox of some sort. In the structural components, so where the lugging is that connects to your excavator, and the frog, which is the crossbar, that is made out of strengths performance steel, and that has a high strength to weight ratio, and that can absorb the flexing and twisting and not break. Not break. So there's a combination. So that's that little bit of give and that compromise. That's right. So gotcha. when you're building a bucket, you use the steels where they are best performing. Interesting. So this, this is where everything comes in. This is where the whole process begins right here. This is all the plate steel. It's stacked up to either be formed or cut or shaped or, or whatever it might be. Exactly. And then it looks like over here, this is all of our round stocking and our pins. That's right. So if you order pins with your bucket, they come in the long dowels and then we have band saws that are cutting them to length. And that's what... Just finished so, one up. So there's a pin that just finished. But I'm assuming as we see go, as we'll see as this goes on, but this is now considered a part because it's cut the length, so it'll go into a bin and, and enter the process. Yeah, so this is still a raw material here. You can see that this was cut to length, but the end is not machined. So it's gonna go into the CNC machine and uh, bevel out the edge, and if there's anything that's going in there, like if there's gonna be drilled out and a grease zerk put in, that would happen. That'll all be done that. in the machining right. process. That's right. This is all automated. It just moved itself forward, and it's going again. And away we go. So 
So all those sheets of steel first have to get cut into specific parts. And that's where they come and are set onto our laser table and plasma tables. Behind me here is a plasma table and an oxy fuel cutter as well. And so uh, this is uh, a strength steel here. That'll get cut out into all these different parts. Once those are cut out, it'll go to machining where they will do the precision machining for the, the luggings and any kind of fitments that need to happen for the parts. So just to kind of tie this all together, the engineering department up front will design all these parts. They'll lay them out on these sheets. That all gets transferred out here to the factory in conjunction with what is needed going down the production line. And all these parts are cut right here. That's right. And uh, you know, for anyone that's familiar with manufacturing, these sheets, there's a process called nesting. Yes. And so the idea is to make most efficient use of, of this sheet. sheet of steel. And so they are putting all those parts together and fitting them in like puzzle pieces so that there is minimal scrap at the end of that cutting process. Awesome. That don't look like your ordinary everyday uh, torture blast table there, Jeff. No, inside this enclosure is a laser table. And so that is cutting out the precision parts that are needed in an excavator uh, attachment. A lot of this is all these moving parts, they all have to fit perfectly. Precision is super important. Even if you're digging dirt, making a product that really works with the machines and that does their job requires precision of this. So what's the huge advantage of the laser? Is it just the precision or is it the precision and speed? It's both. Both? Yeah, you got it right. When you're looking, when you're looking at lasers and plasmas, plasma is generally um, less precise than a laser, but it is more efficient at cutting thicker materials. Gotcha. So that's where it's nice to have the availability of all different options, that's right. and then use them accordingly, however you need. That's right. If you're using smaller parts that are that, that need that precision on thinner gauge, laser's your guy. That's what you do. And if you just need to knock out a big old lug for a bucket, plasma or something. That's assembly. right, that's right. Got it. So what you saw inside the laser, this is outside, and it's these uh, rolling trays that go into the laser. What happens is uh, the staff put sheets of steel on here. There's a second one in there. While that one's being cut, they're, they're preparing this to be cut. Once the laser is done, these trays swap and now you have a tray full of cut parts. While the next sheet of steel is being cut, the, the, the workers uh, take the parts, grind them, make sure they don't have a lot of burrs or anything like that, and this is what it ends up looking like. So that is, uh, show the edge on that there, Jeff. That is, sure. I mean, that's, that is a laser smooth cut. Yeah, that's right. So that came off the laser here. Now, if this was a plaz cut, uh, there'd be a little bit of a curve to it, and on the bottom side, you'd have a little bit of slag and stuff you need to clean up. That's right. And does that build, does the laser build heat? As far as oh, yeah. Yeah, you gotta, stuff? yeah. But that is definitely a very, very precise cut. That is crazy. So, what you're holding there, this is. We need one of those in the shop. <laughs> I'll agree. With my cutting skills, we do need something <laughs> like that. Uh, what you're seeing here is it's a wedge. Coupler lugging for a John Deere. Uh, I don't know what it's for. Is that what it says? I would guess that's what it. Okay, JD. Yeah. John Deere only uses John Deere's only one to use his wedges. Come on, Jeff. You well, know this. West, Western Canada all and some of the true. states is this is all they do. Yep. Yeah. That that where we're from. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever all these parts are cut, no matter what table or what machine they come from. Is this the parts inventory here, so everything's logged and stored until it's needed for the manufacturing process? Yeah, everything is, is, is cut according to the jobs that are coming through, so the buckets. So everything in here is being uh, organized in terms of your order. So this gotcha. is specific to a bucket that is coming through. They're preparing all the parts. Once all the parts are done, it goes to machining and then to welding. So as the orders come in, that's put into the software, which then nests everything on these sheets for whatever's coming yeah. down the line next. Those parts are cut, and I'm sure something's triggered once all parts are available. We're going, we're going to assemble this thing. You got it. Perfect. So this is a classic example of, of what happens after all the parts are ready. They're assembled on carts that 
have all the pieces of the puzzle that go together to actually form the bucket. These are then transferred to the welding bays where the welders and fitters are going to tack it together and make it become the bucket that it's to be. So just to recap real quick, right down there, all of our raw materials come in. They kind of split uh, on that side where they're making all the pins and stuff. On this side, they're cutting out all the pieces and parts. All those are put on the shelves. The parts guys come and put them on these carts. And then we're going to roll around the corner to the actually assembly part. We're going to go see machining first, which needs to happen before welding. See, that's why you're the expert. So we're standing in front of one of the CNC machines here. And when the parts come off laser, even though they're, they're cut to precision, they're not cut to the tolerance you need for uh, perfect pins uh, and any kind of tolerances and any kind of moving pieces of the bucket. So that's where the CNC laser uh, and milling machines come into play. So what's happening here is this is a lugging that's gonna go on a bucket and this machine is slowly boring out that hole. The, the laser cut the initial hole and now with this milling machine, it's just slowly drilling through and refining that process so that the lugging and the pin fit almost perfectly with a consistent tolerance that is really minimal. So, is, so Jeff, this is uh, this is just one of several machines you have here performing different precision. I mean, I don't think of precision machining when I think of buckets. And yet, almost all the parts go through machining before they hit the weld. That's crazy. Yeah. This is a good example here. You can see that that's, that's what we were looking at inside the machine. Uh, and so this would be a part that it looks like there was some welding already done, but it's still not necessarily uh, totally cut. So this is a roll hole right here that's not been machined. What, what you can see here is that bore. This is boring right now. And so this is a, a perfectly smooth surface inside as well as the outer surface and these bevels. That, that bevel and that angle, that's what this multi-tool machine is able to do. It's pretty impressive. And there's, uh, this machine's got a lot of friends in this department. It does, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a whole family. I tried to get ahead of the game and go to manufacturing or assembly. So sure. now we see the machining, the cutting, we missed the roll former down there, but I think they can kind of imply what that is. So do we get to go to where the magic happens now? Yeah, we're gonna move from parts section to welding. And there's two areas of the welding. We have uh, robotic cells, and then as well as manual welding. So we're gonna see both of those in action. Now, I'm gonna do my best to keep him off a welder, but this guy over here, he, see, he sees an arc and he just, he's drawn to it like a bug, you know? <laughs> well, let's go see what's in store. <laughs> So we're heading into the welding area and uh, each welder has their own bay. We're gonna go right first. This is the uh, robotic weld cell. And oh, check that out. So basically that bucket is mounted on a jig in that cell. And once they get it all set up and ready to go, that's how weld out. Yeah. So the, there's a tech uh, in with the engineers. They receive the drawings and they go and they map out the, the pattern that the robot is going to follow. And so they make sure that the weld head is going to be able to position to get right in the corner and then move and follow along. So they figure out what the robot's going to do, and then you bring it into reality. And so the tech here is mounting a bucket that uh, has probably been, been tacked into place. Then they mount it onto the robot, and the robot is going to finish the welding process. So he's doing a dry run of what the, what the, the program told the robot to do and making sure that everything actually works. Once he knows that it's done, he might have made a few adjustments, 
and making sure that the robot is in perfect spot, then you'll hit go and it'll just start welding. Cool. How this works is you've got the robot arm on the left and then you've got the jig on the right. Both of those move in sequence. So right, so that, that whole big blue arm that that's mounted to will actually turn and rotate and then this can reach in and out and do what it needs to. Exactly, that's right. So they're moving together to get that bucket into the right position to be able to do it. So we're in the welding base here and behind you, this is uh, the start of the grafter bucket. This is a new grafter bucket powered by Ramcam. And you can see this is a shell before the thumb uh, is mounted and any of the uh, hydraulics. But you can see here, the brown steel, that is the Hardox uh, tough. So this, I'm guessing is, a, it's either Hardox 500 tough or Hardox 450 wear plate on any of the wear points. You can see that this is where uh, it's going to get mounted on the thumb and the new ram cam cylinder housing is right in here and that gets all enclosed. So this is also a good example of where you use the different types of material in the bucket. So if you look at this thing from the side, yep. you can see the brown high wear stuff. And then if you look at this up here, this is the... This is the strength. The strength. That's right. Gotcha. This is, this is where all that stress happens on the bucket. When you're digging in there, all that force from that stick is pushing down on that lugging and that crossbar. And that's bar. gotta have a little bit of give, a little bit of flex into it to keep it from failing. And then return. Right. That's but down right. here on the bottom where we're engaging the ground, we just need wear from friction. Exactly. Got it. So Jeff, we got one of the newest innovations from AMI right here. We LDR, did. live dig radar. This is, this is the beginning of a live dig radar bucket. Uh, and if you were at Con Expo, you would have seen it on display. Uh, it's just new to the market. Uh, it's going to be rolled out slowly in, in 2023, 2024, then 2025. So one of the comments I got on that little short video I posted is that bucket will never hold up. This bucket's not built any different than any other bucket out there. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's got a so, hard ox bottom in it. I mean, it's the same steel. That's right. It's, it means business. Yeah. You're not going to wear this. This bucket's not going to wear out any faster than any other bucket. That's right. And again, this is purpose built. You're not just hauling material uh, in like a site prep where you're loading on articulate trucks. Right. Uh, this is very specific to utility work where you know that you're in a, in a trenching situation. You know there's utilities present and you need an extra tool. Once you've done all your locates, we know that locates are not uh, super precise, but there's a general vicinity. This gives the operator the tool they need to be able to scan the ground before they dig and do that one more check to see where their utility is located. It's not a replacement tool, it's an additional tool. Exactly, yes, that's right. And you can see, like you said, the floor still hard ox wear plate, so it's gonna wear exactly the same as the other buckets. So the, the magic comes to this bucket later when the electronics are installed, and that's a little bit more, I guess, of a proprietary situation That's but, right. but the nuts and bolts of this thing is not a whole lot different than anything else. Yeah all the electronics are well protected. Uh, the bottom of this bucket has has two uh, antenna plates in it but if you think about even your vehicle you have a, a steel antenna that sticks up. If that were to bend you can easily replace that by unscrewing it and putting another one on. It's the same concept here. That doesn't change the radio that you can use right, inside right, the cab. Right, right, right. It is definitely, definitely a cool idea. I think this is going to be a big item once it gets rolling out. That's right. This is, uh, this is mostly, mostly a pretty nice bucket and thumb here. It is mostly. Mostly, mostly. So this is the, uh, this is the famous LD18. This is an LD18 thumb in production. Yep. Does this one have the extra time on it? Well, I think it's sized to a different machine. Uh, machine. Gotcha. Yeah. That thing is definitely built with authority. That is for sure. <laughs> Pretty cool to see one that's raw stage. Hey. 
seen a grinder over here if you want to flip that upside down. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a little guy, Jeff. Yeah, this is just a little one. We do big and little. <laughs> This is obviously a wheel loader bucket. It is. This is an extreme service spade nose wheel loader bucket. So really intended for uh, mining and quarry applications where you're really bulk loading uh, haul trucks or articulates. Gotcha. And you were trying to explain it to me a little bit before. This is kind of what AMI is gearing up towards is more of the uh, bigger, larger mining, quarry, and operation stuff possibly. Yeah, there's a natural growth there. Um, AMI has really grown in the construction and general excavating market. Um, the mining is kind of that next step, and so we're moving into there. The big thing with uh, AMI and mining is the Exmoor bucket. Uh, that is uh, a unique design that gives more payload with less weight on the bucket. So your suspended load is the same, but you're moving more dirt. And you're able to achieve that through the Hardox product, which is adds that strength. And one thing you explained to me earlier, I don't think they covered on camera, is that's actually hardened all the way through, yeah. unlike like an AR, which is just surface hardened. That's right. So the real benefit of Hardox is that, uh, well, compare it to an AR 400, that is surface tempered. So it's hard on the surface, on the bottom and the top, but in the middle, it's still considered soft steel. So when you're wearing out, it's great at the beginning. Once you break through that upper crust or that bottom crust, now you're essentially wearing out mild steel. You've, you've lost all your goodies. And, yeah, so now you're, you're gonna increase the wear rate uh, significantly. It's just like you know running steel on the road kind of thing. Right. With hard ox, uh, you can you can set your clock to it because it's going to wear at a consistent rate all the way through that that sheet. Pretty nifty, Jeff. What might we have here? Well, yeah, what do we got here? Well, there happens to be an extra bay that is available, and there was one certain project that we just need a little bit of help with to get done. I might know a guy. That would be perfect. Now, here's the thing. I will loan you him, but you cannot keep him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I figured... I'm not for sure if he can follow Prince. Uh, I'm not going to follow Prince, so what I'm needing to do is everything you got here, I got to take that welder and do all the letters with that welder <laughs> on that. Let's see what we can make happen. All right. You got this? Well, I'm going off the prints because I want it exact. Hey, the only reason I'm going to do it exact. Don't put it upside down. <laughs> All right. And if you break through a welder, you got to buy it. All right. Well. See? That ain't falling out right. This is, this is Dirt Perfect's brand that you're messing with. So if it's yeah. Wrong, and AMI's reputation. That's right. All right. A lot on the line. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say that dirt right there looks good. Right? Weld it. Weld it? Yep. What's the famous word? Eyeballs. Got that, got a little splatter there. It was a little warm at the start. Hey, I wouldn't We, we were setting the be... well one inch buckets. <laughs> <laughs> All right, eyeballs. There, there, that's, that's a little better. Go? That's a little better. Is that, right gonna, is that gonna pass QC? QC? Uh, the start won't, but the finished product will. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Only thing I did not look at it. Did you go over the prints on where this all gets tacked off at? Yeah, so they're perfect. You go right there. And yeah. Then that goes just like that. All right. Like you that. want to go ahead and tack yeah, that off? There you go. You're good. Eyeballs. <laughs> I can't do it. I Poor can't. Jeff. <laughs> all right. <laughs> hey, where do they got the tacks at? There, I think you're plug welding this. All right, eyeballs. A little less wire, Matt. Got it.
Y'all look at you go now. Yeah. Where are my plug holes for the AMI? I think you just weld these right here up. Oh, them little flips? No, no you don't weld them up. They're just designed to be tacked off. Now we gotta get that. That's critical there. <laughs> that's their, that's their logo. I want that perfect. <laughs> I ain't worried about the perfect part. You're not worried about the perfect. You wanna make the other part perfect? Yeah. All right. Hey, Matt, you got good eyeballs because I don't trust Michael. Does that look pretty straight? Straight in comparison to the round disc that it's sitting on? Yeah, yeah, that we got We got to make sure that's perfect. Pretty good. I, I yeah. Welding QC inspectors right here. How many guys does it take to put an AMI logo on? One, two, three. A little more. Hold that. Now bump this side back up. That's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. All right. Eyeballs. There's no warranty on this product. <laughs> Don't let me down, little man. Trying to hide them. What are we putting this on? <clears throat> Do we you know yet? All right, I like all that. Now let me get back up here and get some tacks on this. I don't know where they're going to hide the best. All right, we're going to get this stock out. You got it? I think. Let's do it. You read the print, it goes around this way. See? It just goes to show you need me to help oh, you. Oh, yeah. Look, see? Some assembly required. Now, I should be able to. We better keep it up like that. That looks pretty square. Yeah. Go, to your, go to your right, Mike. Or your left, sorry. It's easier for him to move. Right, go to your left. Record yourself. Keep going. Mike, quit rolling it. Keep going. Right there. Right there. Right there. Jeff, what do you think? That's good. I'm old. Get a photo of that. I think it's crooked. We, we had Jeff's eyes on Not too shabby there, little man. Well, I got the tacky done. I don't know, uh, I don't know if they'll hire you, but I'll keep you around. That's good. Uh, yeah, I might need a job. <laughs> yeah, they, they set me up a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. First stack. That's pretty thin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thin yeah. Right. Hey, see the true professional that, you are. You got her lined out. This was was his name on this jacket. <laughs> this was the problem. Oh. Not so much this side, but this side. <laughs> oh. Well, thanks, Mike. Aaron, <laughs> I don't know, uh, for taking care of this. We're going to yes. finish the tour and we're going to send this to paint. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. All right.
So this is where everything comes once it's completed and weld out, I guess. Fit, everything's fitted up, welded out. Yeah, now that welding is done, the attachments get moved over and get staged ready to be painted. Before they can get painted, they go through a wash cycle. So they get hung up on this track and get prepared to go through the wash bay and then into the paint booth. So it looks like this is also where the uh, cutting edge and a few accessories may get installed. Yeah, because they get painted together, this is where a few of those things, uh, and then after painting is when final assembly happens, and that's where any of the hydraulics, plumbing, fittings all get installed. Gotcha. All right. Uh, there's Wash bay looks quiet right now, so we'll actually flow, follow right through to the paint booth through the wash bay. Perfect. Can we uh, give her a little incentive to maybe get the guy behind us wet? <laughs> <laughs> so we're in the middle of the wash bay and uh, <clears throat> the team here is just preparing it. There's a scaling that happens in the welding process so it, it removes all of the oils that would prevent the paint from uh, bonding properly. So we do that. Uh, clean off anything that um, might be caught up in the welding process. It comes out here, they blow dry it, make sure it's dry before it hits the paint booth. So, people may wonder, why do you put so much effort into a, a premium finish on an attachment that's just going to get drugged to the dirt? Well, everybody likes buying something new. Yep. And uh, it's really just part of providing the a premium product. Here it is, it's brand new. Uh, it shows quality. We know there's quality on the inside. We want to show quality on the outside. This is just part of that process. Gotcha. Out of the wash bay, this is a V-bottom rock bucket that is going to be going to Texas. There's actually a few of these coming out. So this one was just finished washing. It's going to be dried down and then moved in to the paint booth. That is one mean looking bucket. That is. Now is this a purpose built bucket or is this a bucket that's actually in your catalog? It's in the catalog, so you can order these. They're very popular uh, in Texas. There's a band in Texas where it's all shale. And to be able to dig in there, you need something as aggressive as this to get through that. That's why these are often going into that uh, Texas area. Uh, they also work well for a frost bucket for ripping through frozen ground to get into uh, ground that's that's ready to be able to dig. Gotcha. So we're inside the paint booth right now, and uh, the buckets that you saw that were being washed and dried are now coming in here. This is a V-bottom rock bucket that is primed. All buckets are primed white, and then the color of choice is applied. This one's about to get cat yellow. So everything in the factory that gets painted comes through this alleyway. That's right. No matter what color, shape, size. Yeah, the system is designed to be able to flex between the colors. So as the product comes through here, they can change between the colors of yellow or orange or black or gray. Jeff, we just seen the rock bucket being painted. So obviously it's gonna exit on this side when it's done. That's and right. this is the final assembly? It is. So after paint, the, the buckets come out here and this is where uh, all the hydraulic cylinders would get installed, any fittings, any pins, hydraulic plumbing, that all happens here. Final painting, uh, touch-ups, and skidded and ready to ship. So this is kind of like it's set up, thumbs here, Buckets there, got some snow equipment here, uh, just kind of... Yeah, it again, it's very flexible. It's whatever's coming through the line gets assigned to each of these assembly bays, and they're the ones that are installing it, getting it ready to go. Mini excavator stones. This is our, uh, this is our cylinder bay. So those are all parts 
that we can pull from when we're installing. The pins are in the back and then those are just racks of different size and diameter of cylinders. That is quite the cylinder collection you yes, have. Yes, it is, <laughs> yes. It also ensures that we have replacement parts as needed. Gotcha, so all replacement parts are shipped out of here then? Yes, correct. This is product that's all skidded, ready to go. Uh, it's probably a, some kind of an early order program that, that somebody has um, put in. Snow blades and then buckets for the season. This is a combination of tilt buckets, ditching, digging, and hydraulic thumbs. Ready to be put to work. You got it. Let's head down here. There's a few larger attachments being assembled. So something that I know you've been interested in yes. is the uh, hydraulic tilt bucket powered by Ramcam. And this is where it actually gets all put together. This is actually a great time to check it out because you can see some of the internals of where the cylinders go that are going to tilt this bucket. So these will be the cylinders that are installed here? Yeah, that's right. Here's the components. And you can see, now this is a, a patented system uh, exclusive to AMI attachments. And the whole point of this is that you have hydraulic cylinders with movement tilting your bucket, but these cylinders are fully enclosed, which means it doesn't matter what kind of materials or weather that you're working in, you're not gonna be hitting rocks on these cylinders. You're not gonna have frozen dirt. Uh, interfering with this and cracking the seals. Everything which, is enclosed. Which does end up being an issue because these things are not used in ideal conditions most of the time. So without going into great detail, sure. these things will hang on these ears, which is what the cylinder attaches to. That's right. And is then cogged to this coupler piece up here on front through this system here. And those the cylinders are able to lay down below and basically push on those ears, which then rotates this. <laughs> you got it. So this is a drive drive shaft system that has cylinders will lay right hydraul in there. hydraulic cylinders connected to those lobes, which are part uh, slide into those splines and connected in here. So all that force of that hydraulic cylinder is pushing against that cam into the spline and moving the bucket, and that's what allows that cylinder to be completely covered. Covered, which may add a little bit of weight, but the durability factor goes way up. Yeah. Definitely. Way up. Yeah, Jeff, um, we could probably we could probably use one of these in southern Indiana, just 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 saying. Well, I think I think it could be used in southern Indiana <laughs> just fine. <laughs> we we would love to try it out. <laughs> All right. Mike, what we were looking at inside was the uh, pre-assembled tilt bucket powered by Ram Cam. This is the now assembled tilt bucket powered by Ram Cam minus the shields that protect the right cylinders. There, so, so here's the cylinders installed. These are what you call those lugs, I guess, where it's attaching. It's onto that cam the piece, shaft. the drive shaft, yes. which is basically splined into there. You got it. Yep. It's a pretty simple concept. And then obviously there's a nice heavy cover that goes over top of this. Everything's enclosed. You got your grease lines ran out. And that, those grease lines come to uh, a grease bank right here. So everything is, is accessible without right there, opening quick up those shields. So I've noticed these hard ox stickers on a lot of stuff around here. What, is there any, what's the importance of them or what's, what's the meaning behind them? Sure. So when we started this tour, we started with those flat sheets and we talked about hard ox and we talked about strengths and the importance of building a bucket with quality materials to start with. The problem is when you paint something gray or yellow or black, now it looks exactly the same as any other steel and you have no real understanding of what's actually behind the paint until you start wearing it off. The hard ox in my body and the my inner strengths are two controlled programs by the steel manufacturer, which is SSAB. They're the ones that manufacture hard ox and strengths steels. There's a strict program for each of those steels that companies have to qualify for and they do a, an audit and a review of the product that is going in, how much content is in it, and your overall product offering. 
only certain qual companies qualify to be able to advertise that this product actually has Hardox wear plate in it. When you qualify, you're part of a program called Hardox in my body, and the same thing for the Strengths Performance Steel. The interesting part about this is AMI Attachments is the first attachments manufacturer to receive both of those designations. And that's first in the world to have both Hardox in my body and my inner strengths. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive. And, and just to kind of put it in layman's terms, that's like kind of a third party verification of the quality of your product. Exactly. Is that a yeah. good way to describe yeah, that? Yeah, that's a great way. Because it's not you it. saying it's built a certain way, it's actually a third party saying they used my products properly and then I'm verifying that it was done right. That's exactly it. We had to go through the process uh, from SSAB to get certified to use that Hardox in my body name. That's pretty crazy. Well, Jeff, you guys have an absolutely awesome facility here. The product line is even more awesome if that's proper, proper English, but I cannot thank you guys enough for having us up and uh, showing us around. This was, this was cool. This was definitely, definitely once in a lifetime opportunity. I and Hopefully we're looking forward to using a few more AMI products in the future. Well, that would be fantastic. I certainly appreciate you guys taking the effort and the time to come up and see us at AMI Attachments. And so glad to be working with you and to be able to share the process and uh, the products that come out of here. We're just, uh, we're just thankful to be a smart part of it. Thank you so much, All right. sir. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mike.